Hi, and welcome to the Stochastic Simulation Model Tutorial. Uh, I'm Rebecca Wartring, and I'll be uh, leading you through this exercise. So to connect to the model that, or the content that you most recently watched, uh, I'll just do a little reminder. Um, so this tutorial will be about the Gillespie algorithm, which is a continuous time discrete individual method for simulating stochastic epidemics. Of course, you can also uh, simulate other biological systems, but we're focusing on epidemics. Uh, and this is an event-driven simulation. So each event is simulated separately and will be characterized by an event time and what type of event is happening. And also important to remember for this exercise uh, is that the Gillespie method uh, may not be computationally feasible, especially for large population sizes. So in this example, we'll be thinking about a rabies system and it's a little bit different than some of the other systems we've been talking about in the course in that there will be two types of transmission. Uh, one that is similar or the same as what we've talked about that's within a population of interest. In this case, it will be a population of jackals and we'll be thinking about rabies transmission among the jackals. Uh, but in this case, rabies isn't maintained in the population normally. So there's a separate maintenance population, it could be uh, domestic dogs, other uh, carnivores, lions, for example, um, that have rabies circulating in their own population and then can occasionally infect jackals. So here's an illustration of those two types of transmission events. So we have spillover infections from the maintenance population where rabies normally circulates uh, is endemic and occasionally uh, an individual from that population will interact with the population we're mostly concerned about or thinking about uh, the target population. Uh, so not necessarily the population we're most concerned about, but the one we're focusing on for our study in this case. Uh, and these infection events, so the infected individuals in our target population will be uh, the eye infectious component and the rate of spillover infections will be lambda times S over N. So the spillover rate lambda times the susceptible fraction in this target population. Notice that it doesn't depend on there being any infectious individuals in the target population, which is separate from the transmission events that we've seen uh, more often in this workshop that are transmission events within the population. So we have an infectious individual in the population infecting other individuals in the population. And that rate does depend on there being infectious individuals. So this is the, the beta SI over N uh, we've seen a lot more in this course uh, so far, but um, this is an additional type of transmission that we'll be considering in this tutorial. So what I would like you to do is to go ahead and open uh, the <clears throat> R script uh, that's linked from the schedule. Uh, it should look like this. And uh, just in case you're not taking the course uh, right now, um, you can also find this tutorial as part of the ICI3D R tutorials uh, uh, hosted on GitHub. And the file name is ICI3D underscore example one underscore stochastic spillover dot R. So as a quick reminder, um, these are our transition events that are possible. So we have uh, the compartments being susceptible, infectious, 
and removed individuals or recovered. Um, so sometimes uh, if, uh, for example, in the case of rabies, there really isn't a recovery uh, component once you start showing symptoms. So here we're going to call them removed uh, since individuals die. Um, and then we have our spillover and infection transmission events, which result in additional infectious individuals in the target population of jackals. Uh, and those rates are specified here. And also we have recovery uh, or removal events um, where an infect infectious individual uh, dies and moves into the um, removed class. And that will happen at rate gamma i. So for this example, I would like you to try changing the population size and uh, and also these other rates in the code. So the spillover rate lambda, the transmission rate beta, and the recovery rate gamma. And you can find these uh, at these lines in the code 12 through 17. So please do pause this video now and try a few different uh, parameter values uh, and population sizes. Uh, recall, you might not want to make the population size too big uh, since it will take a very long time to simulate. Uh, so it's at 50 now. Um, I think 100 should probably be okay. Uh, definitely smaller will work. Um, and larger population sizes will also work. It just depends how long you're willing to wait. So please do try uh, several different um, combinations, run through the full script, and then uh, when, after you've done that several times, uh, leave open your R session uh, with your last simulation run. Okay, so please do pause the video uh, and go through that part of the exercise uh, before proceeding. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to try uh, several values and have uh, in your R session one of the runs uh, fresh up and ready still. Uh, it may look something like this, where we have uh, an outbreak of infectious individuals at the beginning, and then something we don't uh, <clears throat> see uh, in stochastic epidemics. So it looks like, or always, there's uh, an extinction of infectious individuals here. So it does hit zero, which is a special feature of stochastic models. Um, but we also have these little blips and those are the result of there being uh, that additional type of infection, the spillover infections. So when we go from zero infectious individuals to having infectious individuals, that's a time when there was an introduction event from the maintenance population into the jackal population that we're mainly considering as our target population. So maybe you had an epidemic like this, maybe you didn't, um, but let's think about why you may or may have not seen an epidemic in that most recent simulation. So for this model, R0 is beta over gamma. We've seen that before. Uh, and just to recall, the basic reproduction number is the number of new infectious individuals caused by a uh, single infectious individual in an otherwise fully susceptible population. And since we're thinking about the target population is separate, um, the gamma, that spillover rate, isn't going to be incorporated in our R0 because our main population uh, that we're modeling in, our target population, uh, doesn't include those spillover events. They're not generated by an infectious individual in our population of interest that we're modeling. So I want you to think about uh, your simulation and whether 
uh, you saw an epidemic or not, and whether uh, compare the rate of beta that you used and the rate of gamma that you used. So if you didn't see an epidemic, uh, you um, probably chose beta as less than gamma in your last simulation. And in this case, we have what we call subcritical dynamics. So here, the reproduction number is less than one, and we're not seeing an epidemic at the beginning because on average, uh, no, there aren't more than one new infectious individuals uh, for each infectious individual in the target population. But we do continue to see these spillover little blips uh, when there are introductions. On the other hand, if you did see an epidemic, uh, your beta that you chose was probably greater than gamma, and these are what we call supercritical dynamics. So to sort of take a step back and provide some motivation for this exercise, why are we talking about jackals? Why are we talking about uh, target population, maintenance population? Um, at one point, I was thinking about uh, a particular jackal rabies application. And um, in this Rhodes paper um, from 1998, they have infection per week, uh, rabies-related deaths per week, uh, and a jackal density. Uh, so you can calculate the reproductive number based on these values and find that rabies is subcritical. So we're not expecting jackals to be able to uh, create their own uh, epidemics and uh, or maintain rabies in their population. But the question that I and others were asking, uh, it actually started in a previous MMED clinic uh, in 2014, I believe, um, where I was a participant. Uh, we wanted to know how many additional infections were needed in order for rabies to be super critical in the jackal population. So how much extra input do we need from an outside population or how much, uh, so we were looking at a seasonal system where the transmission rate could change based on the availability of resources and how encounter rates happened uh, or the, how the encounter rate changed throughout the year. So how much would we need this uh, B or beta to increase in order for the reproduction number to be greater than one and did we see that in a particular jackal population? So I won't get into too many details about that, but if you're interested, um, there is a paper uh, that um, I've included the information here. Uh, so that's the end of this tutorial. I hope that it was helpful, uh, useful, and interesting. Um, and thanks very much for your time. And I will uh, see you shortly uh, in the clinic. Thanks.